So we gave Dustin his Father's Day gift, or one of them, a little bit early this year so he could actually use it during spring migration. It's called a Puck, P-U-C, and it's a new AI-powered bioacoustic device from Birdweather, who is partnered with Cornell's uh, University Center of Ornithologists or... Lab of Ornithology. There we go. Um, to identify birds by their vocalizations. So it's been running in our yard for a few days now, and we wanted to talk about what we're seeing so far because it perfectly ties into the fact that spring migration is here. Is that Correct, Dustin. Yeah, absolutely. Spring migration is 100% underway. We are in the thick of it right now. So Dustin, why don't you explain to the viewers what exactly is the bird weather puck and how does it work? Well, one thing to know about Lynn is she gives good gifts. I do. <laughs> uh, so the puck is a passive acoustic device that sits out in your yard or wherever you place it, and it uses AI to identify birds by song. So it's a little bit like Merlin, except it picks up audio continuously, whether you're in live mode or recording it for later uploads. So you can take it like when you're hiking or something like that if you want also. And then it cross-references the sounds that it finds with the BirdNet neural network so that it automatically IDs your recordings and stores them to the cloud. And then it takes all that data and aggregates it into a dashboard that's displayed on the uh, BirdWeather app website. Okay. That's very, very cool, which is why I bought it for you, because I thought it was cool. And I, for the record, before we get into uh, what this um, technology is showing us so far about our local area, I want to um, give a little bit of a disclaimer that this is not sponsored content. Um, Bird Weather did not reach out to us. I legitimately stumbled across this product and thought it was really cool and wanted to impress Dustin because I didn't think he knew about this product. And I have to say, I did know about the product and it didn't quite appeal to me because I didn't fully like appreciate how it works. So I do really like the gift, even though it's something I knew of but thought I wasn't interested, if that makes sense. All right. So moving this forward, um, what I would like to know is... Based on what you're seeing, either from your own observations or in the few days that you've been using the puck, would you say migration has officially arrived here in eastern Massachusetts? Yeah, we are full on sending it for migration time. Uh, BirdCast, one of the FAQs on BirdCast that people ask is, when is peak migration for my area and their answer for pretty much all of Massachusetts is that it's May 10th to 22nd so we are right in the center of peak migration time okay so I've just pulled up BirdCast since you mentioned it can you kind of walk us through some of the interesting details as you see them based on so this page is for Massachusetts for our viewers, you can go in and search your local area, your state as well, to see what's going on in, in more local to you. That's right. So last night, we can see they um, recorded over a million birds passing during the night. The peak night so far was 1.4 million birds. Um, and so we're right in the middle of it. It gives us some graphs about where the major traffic was, flight direction and speed and stuff like that. But especially it's great for pointing out the expected migrants based off of uh, historical data. And so this is a list of really interesting birds, some of which we're going to talk about later in the podcast, including the American Red Start, the Eastern Kingbird. And it gives you an idea of what else to be on the lookout for, whether you're looking for particular warblers, yellow warblers, chestnut sided are on their way in, or you're into the scarlet tanagers. I love the great crested flycatcher. The magnolia is a great uh, photographic target. Um, so it's a really great way to familiarize yourself with what is incoming so you know what to be on the lookout for when you're out in the field. All right, so we're taking a look at our specific puck weather station. I've selected it from here inside of Massachusetts. Of course, you can zoom in to exactly where you are, but we're not going to do that. Um, and because I've selected my weather, my bird weather station, it is filtered to exactly the species that my station has recorded. And I wanted to talk about the warbling vireo 
because although it's a plainish bird, it's a really good uh, bird to understand the call from because they call like incessantly. So this bird, even though it's nowhere near as prevalent as house sparrows and tree swallows and morning doves, it's calling like all day long, <laughs> all day long, 3,000 times it's been recorded in just the last seven days. And I'll tell you, the puck was not even on 50% of the time um, during that. So it's a really good um, bird for new birders to be in tune with um, and be able to sort of know when they've arrived because they're one. You, once you know them, you sort of can't stop hearing them. And we have a recording that we can play for the audience right now, right? Yeah, we can do that. In fact, we can play it directly from our sightings even. And I'll play that one more time. And it's called a warbling vireo because it kind of warbles and it just goes on and on. But to me, I think of it as like... So anyway, it was a really good bird to highlight um, the puck capturing, and it's a good one because you know it's a little tough to see, but if you focus mm -hmm. on it, it calls so much, you often can find it. It's a really good, fun bird. I enjoy seeing them every single year. Interestingly, too, this wasn't one we were going to highlight, but listen to what we got when it detected the osprey. It's this chirp that's right in here that we were sitting out in the yard. I didn't even catch it. I didn't even realize they chirp. They kind of do, but it's just a single note. Okay, so that was the warbling vireo. What is the next bird that you wanted to cover? The next one that surprised me, I like to, while I'm working, keep my window cracked and notice if I hear something out of the corner of my ear. And I heard kind of um, an interesting sound that I didn't immediately recognize. I had to think about it for a second. And as I... Uh, went through, I realized I thought it was an American Red Start. So I went to my app on my phone to see what my puck had recorded. And sure enough, two minutes before it had recorded the American Red Start. So this is a bird that um, is a warbler, even though it doesn't say warbler in the name. And it's really striking. I'm not sure if you can see it on here, but it's got like, it's a mostly, the male is mostly black with kind of um, red on its wing and kind of a, a bright spot on its tail there. Um, but I went to that and I listened to it. Let's hear what it sounds like. You can see really clearly on the audiograph, on the sonograph this time, what it sounds like. Oh, it's weird. It, it, it tries to highlight where the call is and sometimes it gets it wrong, which is interesting. But if you go back and play it from the start, here it is. So that's one that I hear of as a very, just a tee, 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 tee. It's really nice knowing that this is the sound that was recorded in our yard because birds do have regional dialects and stuff too. So it's not just what a, a bird might sound like if it was a recording from the West Coast or something like that. So why were you excited to see that this bird has popped up in our area? What's special about the American Red Start? Um, they're one that are mainly just seen during migration. They do nest in our area generally, but mostly farther north. Um, so I usually only get to see them a couple times per year. Um, and it's definitely the first time I had seen or heard one in our yard. So it was a new yard bird for us. When you have the red start selected in the menu, it's then also showing you all of the places where the red start song was detected from. All right. So the next uh, bird you had on the list is the black throated green warbler. Like, wow, that's a name. That's a really descriptive name for this bird. <laughs> It is, and the black-throated green warbler you can see is pretty common, uh, especially during migration times. They like it really high up in the trees, and they have a really distinctive call that kind of, uh, the mnemonic for that is a Z, 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 so it's easy to remember, Z, 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 so that's what you can try to listen for. And yeah, yeah you hear it right at the that end. That part, really at the end. So it did a pretty good job of picking that out. The black-throated green warbler is a striking warbler. Um, really fun to see. It likes, like I said, high in the canopy and also along edges. So if you live near of the edge of a forested air, uh, spot, that's a good place to look for or listen for that z zoo z zoo z sound. So the next one that Dustin wanted to talk about is the northern water thrush. So 
Yeah, so this one was also super interesting to me because I saw it in the data and I had definitely not heard it. Now, we live on the shore of a lake. I've had northern water thrush around the lake, but over in the you know unpopulated, undeveloped area of the lake, I hadn't seen it here directly. And this is, um, although it doesn't have it in the name, it's also a warbler that acts like a shorebird. And you can see they're much less um, commonly recorded because they're, uh, you know, quiet for the most part. And I didn't know this call at all. So I was very interested in, in hearing um, what it had recorded for it. So let's, let's see. It got that one right too. What we have is a um, uh, Red wing blackbird sort of starting, and then you hear the northern water thrush again. So I'm back to the spot. It's sort of that downward part. So anyway, that one was also exciting for me because it was a new bird that hadn't I hadn't uh, we hadn't had in record in the yard. Okay, so the last one that you had on the list is the eastern kingbird, and I've actually heard you refer to this guy is a bit of a tough guy at times. Yeah, eastern kingbirds are really fun to observe. They're called that because they basically are fearless. They'll chase away any bird of any size. They defend their territory. And they're in the flycatcher family, so they're they're pretty easy to see. They're always flying out, grabbing uh, insects from on the wing. Um, and so they're, again, for, for new birders, really fun to see. Um, they kind of have a chittering sound that's kind of hard to pick up, but it looks like it zeroed in on this area but it's highlighted this other area, so I'm curious what. Yeah, that chittering is pretty ripe. Yeah, so it's kind of faint, but you can hear it in the properly highlighted segment, so it's kind of like these parts of the uh, graph. Can you play it one more time? You hear it like dee, 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 dee. Yeah, but a little more chittery than that. But yeah. 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 Yeah, and so they're a good bird. They're Like I said, they're easy to spot. They're mostly black on the back with a, a black kind of long tail, but it looks like it's been dipped in a can of paint is the, the uh, way to remember that. And you can see that they're very heavily reported to with all those sightings. And for the record, I'll also say what you're seeing um, up on this map on this website, um, we're not logged in right now. Um, so if you go to the website and you click on explore in this top right corner, you can come to the data explorer, right? And you can just start putting in information on location and whatnot, and you'll be able to see what's coming up in different areas, correct? Exactly. And you can use the filters on the left-hand side to filter to a specific species or a specific listening station and a specific time window to see what's been heard. And if we filter this to everything that's been heard in our yard, it has a recording of a record of every single recording that was made. So you can see all of these warbling vireo calls and you could play any one of them and then where they occurred and all that kind of stuff. So it is really, really aggregating the data automatically. And this is the place where it really exceeds what Merlin can do because you wouldn't want to store all these recordings on your phone for Merlin and be kind of uploading them and stuff. So the fact that it's automated is really where the value is for this. It's really cool what it can do, um, but we're still in the early phases of experimenting with this device, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can probably get into it a little bit more deeply um, as we move forward, but I've been using it in the front yard and the backyard, the front yard when I'm working during the work week, um, so I can maybe hear stuff too. Um, but we'll definitely be bringing it along on hikes, see what it records in other locations while we're kind of on the move. You can uh, pair it to your phone, so it uses that as a microphone if you prefer also. Um, I will say in the early returns, I think the hearing on it isn't quite as good as my human ear. I've heard a couple of birds like flying, like I heard ravens the other day flying by that it did not pick up that I heard and which Merlin heard. And I've seen it misidentify a couple of things. It told me we had greater yellow legs here, which is an ocean shorebird. That wouldn't be crazy to have at the lake. Um, but I think it misheard a robin and thought it was a greater yellow leg. So it's not perfect, um, but it is very good. And I've been impressed with it so far. Um, we'll probably do a full review of this later in the season, um, maybe as a featured topic and walk you through it in more detail. We thought it was a fun way of giving you guys a snapshot of what is coming through our yard now that the birds have finally arrived. Um, Dustin, um, would you agree with that? 
definitely agree. And we'd love to hear from listeners. What have you been noticing in your yard lately? 